So your second question is how do you get yourself known in the community? So, so for example, let me ask you this question. What do you like to do? What do you like to do for fun? If I was to ask you the same question, what do you like to do for fun? Why is it so hard to come up with things that you do like to do for fun? Because you're so caught up in the grind. This business in life is not supposed to be the grind. You're supposed to have fun through that thing. But by the way, respect the fact that you're grinding it out. So, so here's what I would do. Uh, wh where are you located? Okay, so I look up hiking groups, REI, um, uh, uh, outdoor, outdoor enthusiasts. I'm looking for those groups. So, for example, uh, uh, like Pastor uh, Dudley Rutherford, right? So Pastor Dudley Rutherford, he's a big biker in L.A. And, uh, like, where do you bike in L.A.? <laughs> it's always, right? Right? Where, right? Where, where do you go biking in LA? Apparently, on, uh, on Thursday mornings and Saturday mornings, the biking group gets together about, about, uh, uh, about 45 minutes away, and they go bike 30 miles. So they invest two or three hours to go biking, four hours to go biking. You know, like some people play golf. Any golfers here? So what my point is, there's usually people, especially with social media today, there's these groups that are all over the place. Okay, so when I moved to Dallas... What I like to do for fun? Cigars. So what I found, three, four, five different cigar lounges around here. Cigars International in the Colony, up in Smoke in Louisville, uh, Elite Cigars in Addison, and Addison Cigar Lounge off of, uh, right next to the home office. These are four cigar lounges. I pop in, and I know, I know all the managers. Okay, then I have my favorite lunch spots. So I have a lunch spot, but I don't want to spend a lot of money, right? Right, you know what I mean? Like we're gonna go to like um, we're going to like to like uh, uh, like like original pancake house or or you know maybe some you know like a California pizza kitchen or something like that. There's somebody I want to wow. You know we're going to like Gloria's. You know we're going to like you know uh, um, you know Chamberlain Steakhouse. So I have a lunch spot and a dinner spot. One for mid range and somebody I want to shock and awe. And then guess what I get to know? The managers. So when I walk into the restaurant, hey, John, how you doing? Matt, same table? Yes, same table, I appreciate it. Hey, John, this is my friend here. We're having dinner tonight, my, my prospect, but I call him my friend. Uh, this, is a, this is Sam, Sam, John, John, meet Sam. Oh, interesting, uh, what, do you, what do you do, blah, 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 whatever. Awesome, uh, same table, Matt, yeah, same table. Walk us back to the same table. Awesome, Matt, same, same chair, same chair. Matt, uh, uh, Arnold Palmer, 70% uh, lemonade, 30% tea, yes. Uh, well, so what do you want, my guest? Uh, same thing, Alna Palmer. Great, sit down. By the time my guest goes from the host station to the table, what thing is going through his head? <laughs> do you own this place? Why? Because I go there and I over tip. So you know like people advertise? Instead of advertising in billboards or display as my... Rule is I tip 30%, 40%. So 30% is my, what, what's the normal tip? 20. Is it 20 now? Yeah. Shit, I thought it was 15. Because when I was in service, 15. Oh, it's not with 15. Very generous. I'm, I'm serving you. I was, I'm serving you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, so if it's 20, if, it's, if they like 20, then I'm tipping 40. So my marketing budget is double the tips. Because what happens when you double the tips? What happens when you double tips, you get put on a short list with the manager. And if I'm a good manager at a restaurant, guess what the manager's doing? Find out, find out, the, find out the clientele and the customers who is tipping 30, 40%, and then you, give them a, then you give them a personal call. That's what I'd be doing if I owned a restaurant, okay? Because I want to know who my regulars are who's tipping 30, 40%. I would just want to thank him for coming by the restaurant and thank him for overtaking and taking care of my servers and wish him to come back again the next time. Okay, guess who also I get to know? The valet drivers. The valet drivers is the first and last impression of the restaurant. So I wanna make sure if my guest comes in, hey, by the way, hey guest, so, so, so pull up, talk to, talk to, uh, talk to, talk to uh, Rob. Rob will take care of the valet. I go there, hey Rob, here's, here's an extra tip. I'm taking care of my guest. So by the time the, the client comes in, he's treated like royalty, like who is this guy meeting? By the way, that's how, that's how I've built my name in the in restaurants that I, go, that I go to. Okay, so my wife and I, um, 
We like to work out together. Uh, but lately, we've been working out apart. But it's our, it's our schedule. But we found three, four different gyms to be a part of. Lifetime Fitness, LA Fitness, and our, and our trainer moved here from Chicago down here. And his job, bless you, and his job is to find gyms that we can work out. So we're in three, four different gyms. And guess who we meet over there? The managers. Because managers at most gyms are overworked and underpaid. All right? And they're, and, and they're dissatisfied. And they're not happy. Right? So um, for me, I like, I like uh, uh, at the gym, here's what I like to do. Hey, so-and-so, who's that over there working out? Do they need a trainer? They, uh, I, I can see they're overweight. Or this one lady, she's coming in, young lady, because she's coming in, uh, what do you call those things? A walker. She's like trying to learn how to walk. I said, what, what? She's a young lady over there. Why is she on a walker? Uh, she just got in a bad car accident. She's trying to learn how to rehabilitate herself. So, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you for the next 90 days, I want to hire a personal trainer. Charge me. Charge me. Don't let her know it's me. But go make sure every two times a week she gets you to train her or some of your team so therefore she can start walking again. And that's all I want you to do. Don't tell her it's me, but just say there's a customer that comes to this gym and he wants you to know that God loves you. That's all I want you to say. Okay? That's all I want you to say. Don't say it's me because I don't want to be working out right next to her and she, and she or he feels a different certain way. So what, what type of reputation do I have now amongst the trainers and the gym manager? They're all talking about me now. And naturally, when they talk about it, what do you think they're going to do? Hey, Matt, what is it that you do? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm doing to get, get to know people. Okay, churches. I go to three different churches. I got three different churches. I'm going to Prestonwood Church. I go to one community church, and I go to Elevate Life. I'm just trying to find, I'm trying to find my home church. And guess what? And along the way, guess what I'm getting to meet? pastor, the deacons, the, uh, the ministry leaders. So uh, here to Elevate Church, I got to meet uh, Steve Weatherford. Steve Weatherford is the, uh, the former NFL punt, uh, uh, New York Giants punter. He's a former NFL most fittest man. The guy's a beast. I call him the vanilla gorilla. The guy's, the guy, the guy's massive. He's a six foot four, 240 pound punter. Jacked. Right? His back is just like, bah! Right? So I got to meet this guy. And I said, hey, uh, hey, Steve, what can I do to, to, to spread your message? So if I'm looking to get to know somebody, I want to use whatever platform that I have, whether it be on social media or in my office, to say, hey, can I interview you for my YouTube channel? Can I interview and provide some? Can we do an IG Live? Can I share with my audience some, some of the tips and uh, um, strategies and mindsets of being a championship uh, punter? And so that's, that's all I've done with my, uh, my YouTube channel, to get to know people. And what happens when you start doing, and you commit your life to social media, documenting things on social media. What happens if you're doing all these things on social media and then you're geotagging it, right? You know, like in, in uh, your location on, on social media, I'm always tagging Chicago, I'm always tagging Dallas, I'm always tagging wherever I'm at. Wherever I'm at. Because what happens in those geotags? People in those areas find your stuff. And they, stumble, they stumble across your profile. For example, I was uh, at Starbucks on, uh, off the 121 and Josie, Main Street, okay? I just pulled off the road and went to Starbucks. You know, some people, Bobby, you know that long line in the drive-thru people go through? Yes. It's so annoying, right? Yes. What's, 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 what's the hack? How do you get your coffee faster? You can just the app, the app, and then order and just pick it up. Right. So you don't sit in a line. <laughs> on your way over there, you're ordering on the app, and you walk up, and you walk out. You don't sit in the drive-thru. Yep. That's the hack. Yep. Okay. So I go in there, I pick my stuff up. She opens, because there's one of those windows she opens up. She goes, oh, you're the guy in TikTok, huh? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I crowd across all your financial stuff all the time. Because my social media manager uploads three or four times a day on TikTok. I don't pay, like, we're, how many, how many, we're up to how many subs now, how many followers on TikTok? 112? 112,000 followers, I'm not even following it. So what happens on social media, TikTok, IG, Facebook, if you're documenting your life, you're documenting your day, three things, like for example, tonight, five things I learned from talking to a cash flow millionaire, three things I learned from somebody that wrote a, a bestseller on Amazon. These are some titles I'd be writing on my social media up, and, and then to, later on tonight, we put a selfie, we post, and, and it shows your followers that you're surrounding yourself with 
positive people. Because you're now guilty by association. association. Right? So, oh, you know, my cousin was part of this thing called EIB and PHP, but I don't know who he's hanging around with. Boom, social media posts up. You got a picture with Jace. You got a picture with Natalie. You got a picture with some pretty people. You got a picture with Almaraz. You got a picture here with uh, Matt Colty, right? All these pretty people. That's in Janelle. You got all these pretty people that you're hanging around. And I'm like, what do they do? What do they do? Oh, they're part of that same company? Well, how much money do they make? Oh, they're, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So now you're creating some proof. Yeah. I'm just not screwing around on Thursday nights. So anyway, long answer to how splash into marketplace.